Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're here for the first time, I'm Devi Sundar and in my channel, I talk about breath, mental health and occupational well-being. In this video, I'm going to dive into something I think we have all experienced, but maybe we haven't fully confronted yet. Fear. And I'm not talking about the usual fears. Hides, spiders, public speaking. I'm talking about the kind of fear that shows up in our workplaces, in our leadership, and in how we connect with each other, particularly when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion. As a psychotherapist, neuroscience coach, hypnotherapist, and respiratory physiotherapist, I've seen firsthand how fear can quietly shape our lives. But what's most striking is how often we don't talk about it especially in our workplaces where fear is a elephant in the room that no one seems to acknowledge. So let's break this down. There are different kinds of fear and all of them influence how we show up in the world. First, let's talk about those who are well represented in our institutions. If you are in that position of power, there's a very real fear of change, especially when we talk about diversity and inclusion. You're not alone in feeling this. Neuroscientifically speaking, our brains are literally wired to risk is uncertainty. It triggers your amygdala, the part of the brain responsible for fear. It's primal. When you talk about redistributing opportunities, it triggers the sense of unpredictability. People fear they might lose their privileges. They have long had, whether they acknowledge that privilege or not. When we sense a shift in our status quo, our fear response kicks in. It's the brain's way of saying, hey, hold on, it's, this is not familiar, this is unfamiliar, which unfamiliar means our brain understands it unsafe. But in modern contrast, this can turn into resistance to very changes we need to create a more inclusive spaces. Now let's switch the gear to those from underrepresented groups. The fear here isn't about losing power. It's about not belonging, being the only one, that only woman or that only person of color, the only person with a disability in the room, that sense of isolation trigger a constant stress response. Neuroscientific research shows that social rejection or isolation triggers the same neural pathways as physical pain. Think about that. It's not just a psychological experience. Social exclusion is felt in the body. The tension in your chest, the tightness in your throat, these are all physical manifestations of fear. And when this fear is constant, it can lead to burnout, anxiety, and a deep sense of alienation. Over time, this chronic stress can lead to disengagement and deepening sense of invisibility. What's more worse is this fear often get internalized. Instead of believing the system is flawed, people begin to doubt their own worthiness. It's what we call imposter syndrome, which is not just a psychological concept, but a deeply embodied experience manifesting shallow breathing, muscle tension, and that Familiar tightness in the chest that signals the body is preparing for rejection. As a respiratory physiotherapist and psychotherapist with over 22 years of experience, I've seen how emotional experience can manifest physically. Those who feel excluded may unconsciously hold the tension in their bodies, often reflected in dysfunctional breathing patterns that mirror their internal struggles. They are in a constant state of low-level stress, which prevents them from feeling safe or fully present. Now, what about those of us who are working to be an inclusive leader? If you're in that position or trying to get there, you know the fear I'm talking about. It's the fear of getting it wrong of saying the wrong thing, of being as hypocritical or worse, performative. This is where the neuroscience can be your best friend. Inclusive leadership requires a high level of emotional intelligence and cognitive flexibility. The function is primarily governed by the prefrontal cortex. But when you're afraid, the cortisol, the stress hormone, floods through your system, making it harder for you to think clearly or empathize with others. You're in a survival mode. The body goes into fight or flight response and the other part of the brain responsible for creative problem solving and empathy and self-regulation shuts down. Many leaders put on a brave face, hiding this fear behind the layers of confidence. But that toxic poster video I mentioned earlier only deepens the problem. It masks the very real emotional labor involved in leading inclusivity. Instead of acknowledging the discomfort, we keep moving, trying to think positive our way through it. But the body remembers. 
Fear, when suppressed, doesn't disappear. It embeds in our physiology, leading to anxiety, tension, and burnout. But here's the thing. Fear isn't the problem. The problem is how we handle it or don't handle it. In many workplaces, we have this toxic positivity where everything has to be fine all the time. But Pretending like fear isn't there doesn't make it go away. You know those meetings where someone brings a real concern, maybe it's about feeling excluded or about changes that are making people uncomfortable and it's quickly brushed aside with a famous phrase, let's focus on the positives. Yeah, that's what I mean by toxic positivity. Here's the truth, fear is normal, it's human. But if we don't acknowledge it, we can't transform it. In neuroscience and therapy, we know that naming an emotion reduces intensity. Simply saying you're afraid gives you power over it rather than the other way around. And the two other important thing is, first, we need spaces where fear can be spoken openly without judgment. Whether you're from well-represented, underrepresented, or in leadership, your fear is valid. It's not something to hide. In fact, when we talk about it, we lessen its power over us. Second, leaders need to model vulnerability. It's not about having all the answers. It's about being open enough to say, I'm still learning, I'm navigating too. Vulnerability builds trust and trust is the foundation of truly inclusive space. Let's get practical now. One of the simplest way to calm your nervous system when you feel fear raising in through you deep. As a respiratory physiotherapist and psychotherapist, I've seen how powerful this can be. Breathing slowly and deeply signals your body that you're safe, which brings your prefrontal cortex, that part of your brain that uh, helps you to think clearly back online. End of the day, fear isn't the enemy. In fact, Fear can be a catalyst for your growth if you face it. It's about recognizing fear as a natural part of the change and it's something that we can work through together. With awareness, presence and breath, we can transform fear into courage. Thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video. And remember, the future belongs not to the fearless, but to those willing to face the fear and lead with courage. As usual, until next video, stay curious, stay healthy. Signing off, Devi Sundar.